Have you ever struggled with the perfect elevator pitch? If so, this video is for you. My name is Anthony Anderson, co-founder of Elite Resource Team. Taught over 1,100 advisors and about 600 accountants how to grow their businesses. And in this video, I'm gonna go through some of the common mistakes that I see people use when they are trying to define their elevator pitch and also a couple best practices, some tips that you can just start using today. All right, one of the biggest mistakes I see is people actually using labels, like they label themselves. For example, I am a financial advisor. I am an accountant. I am an insurance agent. As soon as you label yourself with a profession, whoever you're talking to is going to automatically think they know what you do based on their past experience. For example, I am a financial advisor. Oh, okay, you do retirement planning. My neighbor's a financial advisor. I am an accountant. Okay, you do tax returns. My brother-in-law is an accountant. I am an insurance agent. Okay, you sell people insurance products. Yep, I've met a couple insurance agents before. What you're doing is you're giving up control of that person's definition in their mind of who you are. So what I like doing instead is getting away from the labels. I am, never say that. I blank by blank. This is what I really like using. And here you can input whatever word really defines you the best. Personally, I like help. I help. This is what you do and your niche by the result that they get, okay? So I help, I teach, I show who. I show, I help. For me, my CPA, my niche, or the niche that we teach our advisors is CPAs, right? So I help CPAs, and then what do you do for them? What do you do for them? I help CPAs by allowing them to bring more proactive and holistic value to their clients, right? So obviously it's a little bit long here, but what you wanna focus on is describing something that doesn't put you in a box. I help CPAs by allowing them to bring more proactive and holistic value to their best clients. Well, that's kind of unique. You're not like my neighbor who sells insurance policies or like my brother-in-law who does tax returns. So I'll give you another example. I teach, I teach entrepreneurs how to pay less in taxes. I show business owners how to grow their revenue, okay? So these are all examples of including what you do with the niche you serve and then how you actually help them. So let's talk about this one for a second. I, I said value, right? I help CPAs deliver more value to their clients. And I use the words proactive and holistic. Do not include products in your elevator pitch. Like you should never include asset management. You should never include tax returns. You should never include annuities or life insurance or anything like that. What you wanna do is use words that are very hard to disagree with the value that they bring. That's why we say holistic and proactive value. Like, what are you gonna do? Argue with me that it's not a good thing to bring clients more proactive and holistic value? No, I don't wanna bring my clients more value. Okay, well, you're a terrible professional. Like, I don't wanna work with you anyways. So look for things that are helping describe what you do to your niche and then using words that are hard to like argue against. Okay, so uh, another example of that would be, I teach baby boomers to have more confidence in their financial future. Pretty hard to say that you're a terrible person because you teach baby boomers have to have more confidence in their future. No, nope, that's a pretty good thing to do, right? So you're, you're, you're getting away from labels, which are gonna put you in a box. You're defining your niche, again, CPA, entrepreneur, business owner, baby boomers, whatever is the niche that you're focusing on. So what you do, the niche you serve, and then describe some type of value that you bring to them, okay? So the other thing I would say is when you are creating your elevator pitch, think of it like an appetizer. A lot of times I hear or I see in our training community somebody that 
creates a, an elevator pitch that's like a paragraph long. They kind of go through the appetizer main course and then try to squeeze in a little bit of dessert at the end there. It's like, no, 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 no. The elevator pitch is just meant to be the appetizer. It kind of wets the palate a bit and makes you think, wow, if it was that good, what's next, right? So the best response, in my opinion, that you can have from a good elevator pitch is a massive question mark. And that's kind of counterintuitive. So let me explain what I mean. If I meet somebody and I throw up all over them and tell them exactly what I do by describing my label and like the products I sell or something like that, they automatically have nothing else. There's no more left in the conversation. It's either like they want to work with you or they don't want to work with you, but most people don't want to be sold. So it's much more comfortable to just say like, oh, okay, that's nice right? And then leave the conversation. But a much better outcome of that is to describe something again that has value, but leaves it relatively vague, like an appetizer. So now you leave them wanting more. It's like, okay, what's the main course? So I help CPAs by allowing them to deliver more proactive and holistic planning to their clients. That's like, as long as I would make it. From there, What's somebody gonna say? You might even be wondering this as you're watching the video. How do you do that? What does that mean? That's what I want. I want the response to be interest. I want people then, as soon as I've used my elevator pitch, right, I've put something out, I want them to then pull more information out of me, okay? Because a salesman, I don't wanna use, throws up, sorry for the, the verbal there, but, but it's true, like if you're getting sold, like you picture a timeshare, a used cars person, you're like, ah, stop, let me just, just break, let me just get out of this conversation. Rather than that, what I'd much rather do is use a short like five to 10 second elevator pitch and then sit back in silence. And ideally they say, what does that mean? Like, tell me more. Sure, I'd be happy to. Then you go into the main course a little bit. Depending on the environment, I would either go into a little bit more discussion about what that means, or I would say, I'd love to. I actually think it's a longer discussion than I really have time for right now. But why don't we set up a time to grab coffee or grab lunch or have a Zoom, you know, uh, 2021 here, more Zoom meetings than coffee meetings going on. But, but that's the ideal scenario is you pique their curiosity, you get them asking you, more information about that, and then you set an appropriate time to have the main course. So I hope, I hope that helped. If you did find that helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. Also, would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Every Friday we try to release new videos like this, just free training content to kind of get the wheels turning, hopefully you got a little bit of value out of this. And if you are a wealth manager or an insurance agent and you are, interested in understanding how to bring more value to CPAs, to attorneys, to other professionals by allowing them to deliver that proactive and holistic advice, go ahead and check out the description. I've included a link to our calendar and we would be more than happy to jump on with you and talk to you a little bit more about our training, your business, how you can incorporate some of these concepts to grow your firm. That's it for today. Anthony Anderson, appreciate uh, your time.